So Google recently introduced Earth Studio, and this is a browser-based animation tool for working with all of Google Earth's 3D and satellite imagery. So if you're new to Earth Studio, be sure to check out my first tutorial. I'll put the link in the description, and it's kind of an introduction to what the program is, how to use it, and how to animate Google Earth imagery. This particular tutorial is much more advanced. I'm going to show you how to composite those Google Earth animations inside of Adobe After Effects. More specifically, I'm going to take you step by step through the process. I'm going to show you how to add track point information inside of Google Earth Studio. I'm going to show you how to export that information, how to bring it into After Effects, and then how to composite both 2D and 3D graphic elements. So let's get started. So for step one, I want to create my two animation shots inside of Google Earth Studio. So I'm going to create a new project here. Call the first one Arc de Triumph 01. And I'm going to change this to five seconds. It's going to be a short shot. 30 frames per second is fine. Now, if I just click on the search bar here and go to Arc de Triumph, that'll take me straight there. But I want to have the kind of this first shot as high altitude. So I'm going to take this way, way out. We want like a whole shot of Paris here. That's looking good right there. So I want my shot to start about here. So I'll bring it here and I'll pan it a little bit. There we go. This will be my first shot. I'm going to add keyframes. I'm going to go to the end and kind of drag this back and then pan it back this way add the keyframes and there we go okay now for the second shot I'm gonna go to file new and I'm gonna use one of these quick start projects here I'm gonna click on spiral and this is gonna give me this startup wizard here and then I'm gonna go ahead and select that arc to triumph again and then go through here it's gonna show me the shot that's actually looking pretty good we go to next and let's say we want this to be 15 seconds instead of 25. Now we'll set up this. Okay, so we have our two shots here. Now I want to bring these both into After Effects, but before we do, I want to add some track points to tell After Effects a little bit about where I want to place my particular graphic elements. So for step two, I'm going to add track points. Now a quick way to add track points is to um, basically view this in a different way. So if you look over here, we can see that I can change my viewport layout and I can change it to this two here. I can also do that over here in view and multi-view and select two viewports. And now over here in the second um, screen here, I can check any of these, but top is the best. And if I zoom in here, I can see this cool animation. It's a different kind of look at what we have going on here. Very, very cool. And the way we can add a track point is I can just go over here and I can do this in either um, place here, but I want to do it here because this is kind of flat and two dimensional. So if I click right on here, right click and set set track point, that's going to set that track point. Now I can double click and rename it Arc de Triumph. And if I open this up, this shows us where specifically it is. It shows us the altitude. So now we can close that. I can zoom in a little bit further, just make sure that this is right over it, which it is not. So I'm going to put it right over that camera target point. Okay, that's looking good. Let's save this project. Save as Arc de Triumph. Let's call it Spiral so we know what's going on here. And now let's open up the other project, Arc de Triumph 01. Okay, now for this shot, I want to do the same thing and add the track point to the Arc de Triumph. But you'll see we're not looking at the Arc de Triumph right here because our animation's from a super high altitude. And you can see the Arc de Triumph is way up north here on the map. So all I need to do is go back in here and search for Arc de Triumph. That's going to take me there, but it's also going to move the camera there. So if I zoom in, I can just simply right click on here, set track point, rename this Arc de Triumph. Then I'm going to close the track points panel. I'm, and this is the camera that we're looking at here. So if I move the camera, you can see that our track point is here. And if I simply scrub over here, that's going to move our camera back to our keyframes. And now we have our animation as well as our track points. So now that I have these two shots with track points, it's time to render these out for After Effects. To export, I'll go up here to this big red render button. Click on the render button. And now we have the basic layout here, which is perfectly fine. The frames and dimensions 
and this is all these settings are fine but I'm gonna go to advanced here and here you can see this include 3d tracking data checkbox and it even says here compatible with After Effects so I'm gonna click on this and then I'm gonna click start now one thing you want to know is that you don't want to open up a new tab otherwise this render will pause and it can also cause problems with this render so you want to leave, just leave this tab open and then after this is done I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing with my other spiral shot okay now I can go back to my other project here the spiral project and we'll do the exact same thing here click on that big red render button go to advanced and then hit that include 3d tracking data and go ahead and render that out. Once those renders are complete, I'm gonna to go to my downloads folder and you'll see that these exported out as zip files. So I'm gonna go ahead and open both of these up and see what we have inside. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. And if we take a look here, you're gonna see that it contains our project file, which is an Earth Studio project file. It has this script file for Adobe After Effects and then there's a footage folder that contains our JPEG image sequence, and that's how these animations export out as, they're JPEG image sequences. Okay, so now let's go inside of After Effects. Now all we need to do to bring this into After Effects is go to File, Scripts, Run Script File, and then I'm gonna navigate to that Downloads folder, and this is the first one here, and grab that .jsx script file here. I'm gonna open that up, and now what has happened here? Well, we have a new composition automatically created with all of the assets included. So if we take a closer look, it's brought in a camera and this camera has matched the movement that we created inside of Google Earth Studio. We have our image sequence that imported as a video. We have a null layer and this is our track point is converted as a null layer. And then After Effects even creates a text layer and attaches it to that particular null, which is again, the track point. Now I'm creating two specific shots here, and for the first shot, I want it to be two-dimensional. You can see that we have this new text layer here, and if you look down here, it's a 3D layer. But I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and for the first example, I want to use this radar blip that I've created. I'm going to double-click this comp here, and if we take a look, I've created this uh, simple radar blip, and I want to put this right over the Arc de Triomphe and have this kind of radar blip thing happening as the animation occurs. So go ahead and close that. Now I'm going to bring this in. Now this is quite simple. To have a 2D, now with this laid in we can take a quick look and you can see it's just in the center, it's not moving along with our image sequence. So to make this happen I just need to add a basic expression to the position of my pre-comp here or of my particular element that I want to attach. So I'm going to hit the P shortcut key to bring up position and I'm basically going to tell this position attribute to attach to this null layer. So first I'll alt click on position here and now I'm going to paste this expression. If we take a closer look at the expression, this expression is actually available. I got this from the documentation of Google Earth Studio and I'll include the link in the description to the documentation but I'll also include this script automatically pasted in here. So it's saying this comp layer and in parentheses here we have the track point name and it's telling it to attach it to that. So all I need to do is go in here and change out track point name and type in the name of my null layer, which is the track point. So I'm gonna type in Arc de Triumph and then when I release it and play it back now, we can see that this radar blip is connected to the Arc de Triumph, which is right here. And now I can go here to my pre-comp, hit the S key to scale that, and I can actually scale that down if I want. make it as large as I want and once again this is a 2d layer this is not 3d so you can see the 3d layer is not checked here so this is just a simple 2d element that is now tracking along with here so let's have a quick render preview and there you go now my 2d element is tracking along with my map here and everything looks great now let's take a look at how we can composite a 3d element into one of our animations so I'm gonna close this composition and then I'm gonna go and open up our other comp. So I'm gonna to go to File, Scripts, Run Script File, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna grab the script file of our spiral animation that we created, click Open, and now we have the same thing here. We have a new composition that has a camera matching our camera movement there. We have our image sequence file that imported as a video clip, and then we have our track point converted to a null layer. 
which we also have this text layer connected to that particular track point null layer. So if I zoom out, what's going on with this text layer? Well, this text layer is just doing something crazy. It doesn't look good. It's not fitting in screen here. And the reason that is, is because Google Earth Studio uses the geographic coordinate system, whereas After Effects uses the Cartesian coordinate system. And when you bring something over from Google Earth Studio, it's basically translating those geographic coordinates to the Cartesian coordinates. And when that happens, you can get some crazy results. So we just need to make a couple of different modifications to attributes to get this exactly where we want it. But I don't want this particular text in here. I want to use something else. So I'm just going to delete this text altogether. And I'm going to bring in my own element. So here I have a composition called marker. If I open this up, this is just a simple marker. No animation, just a simple marker. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to bring that in. And now I have my marker here. It's not tracking. It's a simple 2D marker. So now I need to make this 3D and figure out how to get it to react to my camera data that I exported from Google Earth Studio. So the first thing I want to do is turn it into a 3D object, and then I'm going to parent it to my null layer, which is that track point from Google Earth Studio. Then I'm going to go ahead and lock all the layers except for the marker, because I'm only going to be editing the transform properties of my marker. So now I'm going to open up the transform properties. And if we look back here in the comp, you can't see the marker anywhere. And that's because when we turned it, on into a 3D layer, it's using these geographic coordinates, which are very, very far off. We don't even know where this is. So when, we, when it translates the geographic coordinates to Cartesian uh, coordinates, it gives you some pretty, pretty crazy numbers on your position attribute. So I'm going to go ahead and zero this out, both the X, Y, and Z here. And now we can see there's our marker, but it's still a little wonky. It's actually tracking with our camera now, and it's in position. Now we just need to fine tune it. So it looks like the orientation is still off a little bit. So I'm gonna go down here to orientation. I'm gonna zero that out as well. Okay, now our marker is flat. But what I want this marker to do, I'm gonna zoom in here. I want this to be a small marker bouncing and spinning on top of the arch here. So what I can do here is I'm gonna turn the X up 90 degrees. That's gonna bring it straight up. And I'm gonna scale it down to let's say 20 and then I'm going to bring back the position here I'm going to bring it up and let's say 50 whoops no negative 50 so we'll bring it to negative 50 and now this marker is in place and you can see that it's actually tracking in 3d here okay so it's in place now I need to simply make it bounce up and down and spin so to do that, I just need to throw a couple of quick animations on orientation and position. I'm going to do this pretty fast here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to do a quick orientation, go to one second, and I'm going to have this spin around 180. And then I'm going to add a quick expression that's going to make this loop out. So now this is, so that'll just make it spin. And now for the bounce, I'm going to go over here to position and I'm going to have it go from 50 to, let's say, negative uh, 75. And then I'll have it come back down to 50. And I'm going to loop that as well. I'll easy ease that with F9, add an expression, and then I'm going to go to property, loop out. And now we should have our animation here. Okay, now let's just turn on some motion blur. And you know what? I'm also going to go to the opacity. I'm going to knock this way down because completely, completely 100 is not looking very good. Well, let's bring it down to 75. And now let's take a quick look. Okay, so that's looking good. That's how you composite a 3D element into your Google Earth animation. And let me just show you really quickly. I can also composite this radar blip again in 3D space. So here I have the radar blip, and it's just this 2D element right now, as we can see. So I just need to kind of repeat the same steps. I'm going to turn it into a 3D object, parent it to this track point null, 
open up the transform properties and then we're going to zero out the position and we're going to zero out the orientation and I don't need to turn this 190 degrees because we want it flat with the surface of the earth all I need to do now is change the position here so I'm going to move this position up to just underneath here if we go to the end of the shot we can take a look at where we want it specifically so we can have it right at negative uh, 48 maybe and then we'll turn the opacity of this one maybe down to 80 and now we have a 3d marker with our 3d radar blip let's take a look at that So there you have it. There's how you can composite your Google Earth animations inside of Adobe After Effects. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I found this to be extremely fun to play around with. I want to create some more animations. And for all you people that commented on my last video that you got approved for um, using the preview version of Google Earth Studio, let me know how you like it. How do you like the interface? If you've created anything with it, please share a link in the comment section. I'd love to see what you create. And I hope to create some more projects that I can share. Maybe I can make some more tutorials about uh, any requests, leave them in the comment section. And uh, I think I'm rambling now. So if you enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be publishing some more content very soon. So Lucas, what did you think of Google Earth Studio?